Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paul Brown Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Tennessee Titans and the Cincinnati Bengals. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Ready? 50, plant. Three, check, 53. You don't want it. You don't want none of it. Give me that. Pick up the ball. Five. Now they'll run it on the toss. He'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The last run got six, now second and four. I got you, Pop. You draw Porker. And he'll give it here to his running back. And this won't be enough to pick up the first, a gain of two, third and one. Well, they had that one snipped out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Ready, so just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early it up, third and one. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will be knocked down hard, but he will have the first down. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. The former second round pick, this is Joe Mixon. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Kevin Byard up to make the tackle. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Watch tight. Tight ends right. Watch tight. Tight ends right. Hey, hey, hey. We got three. We got three. Three down. Three down. Six, six. Pull it high. Ready, ready. From the gun on third down, Tannehill looking left side and he's got a man. It's Malone. Let's go, let's go. Let's Give go. him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and ten at the 45. Three down, three down. Check, 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 check. Now. From the gun to give to Mixon. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run.
The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Going to give this time to the tailback. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Eighth play of this opening drive deep, 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 coming deep, up. Sir. This is third down. Three down. Yeah. And he'll give it here to his running back. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. On fourth down, here's Justin Vogel on to punt it away. They go play action here on first down. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. But that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. No such thing as a loss. We taking wins home. Both foes and Mike. Watch the screen. Throwing again. Lawton. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here. Third and ten. Hey, Charlie. Hey, check 24. Watch 24. Operating from the gun. Cleveland. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. A shotgun handoff to Henry. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Let's go, D. Exit. Hustle, hustle. Looking to throw on second down. Cleveland. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, Cleveland is going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. 
And they do get this across midfield of the 49, but a small consolation prize as he's well short of the first. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. Five, six, From that position, eight, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, go, inside the five. Superb. Pro team spill. Hey, check 24. <laughs> now a handoff here to his running back. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's able to get him a small cushion before being taken down at the five, a gain of three. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative, but you know me because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up because otherwise this defense is just going to gang up on the run and shut them down. On the right. Facing the prospect right. of a punt right from their right own there. end zone, right. they need some cushion. Right. Let's see what they can do on third down. Hey, alert three, alert three. Three grippers, three grippers. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be taken down for a loss back at the three. Fourth down now after a loss of two. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. A big hitter that time in the punt game. 66 yards on the boot. And it'll be Titan football. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. They've been playing the field position game thus far. No score, second quarter as they come up on first and 10. A little bit of daylight on that first down run sets them up nicely. Eight yards on the carry, eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Kill, kill, kill. Turn up. Kill. To throw on second down. Lawton, that's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. 11 yards there, first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Off the play fake, Lawton. Into double coverage, and it's intercepted. William Jackson with a pick, and his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. So the first interception of his career under center, and you knew it was going to happen sooner or later. It has to. And I know it feels like the world is just tumbling down at this moment, but there's got to be some veteran somewhere, some mentor that's going to tell him, hang in there, my man. Plenty more to come. Keep firing. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. We now, after this. the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Got it. Hey, we got Mike, number 53. Mike, 53. Come on. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. No it's second down. No right, didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Brings up third down and 12. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. Receiver, receiver. Hey, you're on an island over there. Five, five. Who's on 85? Come on, baby. Let's get this. Tight end to the right, boy. Tight end to the right. Move. Get it. And 
now a first chance for the backup here to throw. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to, like a good golfer can check one up. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try and move the football. It's complete to Brown, right side. That one, a first down pickup of eight. fake they'll look to throw he's gonna let this one go deep into a double team and it's intercepted picked off near the 44 and his guys will take over at their own 44 yard line so that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception ordinarily we look at the offense and say what's going on with your scheme maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit they've got them frustrated right now The Bengals drive about to get going. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Hey, echo. On second down, it's McSorley. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. His big tight end, Tyler Eifert, the intended receiver. And it's third down. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. And they'll get this across the midfield stripe, but still winding up short of the first down. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. The Bengals bring out their punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. The Titans take over first down. Let's go, boys, bring it on. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop them a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. That sends them two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. Coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Ready, ready, see. 
Now this time he'll look to throw. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. It'll wind up being a net of 41. Nine-yard return, 50 on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. On the NFL scoreboard, an update from Foxborough. And the Patriots are out to an early lead there over the Jets. I would definitely imagine we'll hear more from that game as we go along. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And he'll give it here to his running back. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And finally taken down at the 44-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the 8-yard line. 36 yards on the play. Not really any offense for them to speak of here in this first half. Maybe that's what they needed, that big play. Yeah, it seems that maybe everything changes right there. They've been a little slow out of the gate. We've seen that, but that one big play, that can spark a big burst right here. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. A great play there. Touchdown number 15 of the year. As his guys are first out of the scoreboard here this afternoon. Extra point by Seibert up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. The Titans take over Come on, fellas. At their own 25-yard line. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. Just like that. Check 45 to Mike. Check 45 to Mike. Oh, three, one, three. They go. Three, one, Back to throw now on first down. He'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Quick hitch, complete. It's Brown. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Back to throw. Cleveland finds his tight end Ingram. 
And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Ten more there and another first down. It's a game of ten. First down, Tennessee. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 46. And he missed it. It's no good. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's the Bengals leading this one. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded at the two. Oh, able to avoid him. Let's go, boys. Let's go. At their own 29 yard line. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Come on, set. Come on. 30 base. Set 56. All day, baby, all day. <laughs> Second and six. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. 45, 45. Mike, get it. Operating from the gun. Cleveland. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. On now is the Titans. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. Anxious moments there on the fake, but they do get just enough to pick up the first down. Two first downs have them up to the 41 now for first and 10. Derrick Henry. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Credit the sack to Malik Jefferson. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely, going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop, something big to knock them back on their heels? And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. 57, Mike, 57. That's right, baby. He'll look to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Brown. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 44-yard line. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Show some confidence, supreme confidence. Big-time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did.
That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Yo, 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 go, go. Here I come again. Hey, do. 56, Mike, 50, go. Second and 11. Go, D. Let's go. And right side, Henry's got it. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Ready, ready, play number nine on the ready, drive coming ready. up, and they need nine yards on third down. From the gun, Cleveland. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 37. And he'll get it all the way down inside the 35-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Yeah, and that was a safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed. A big hit for a loss. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They keep it on the ground. This time, it's Mixon. And he'll get it down inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. The tackle is made by Adoree Jackson. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Get there, get there, get there, get there. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Joe Mixon, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bengals, they widen their lead. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Following the touchdown, here's Cyber now to kick it off. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. A second down play results in a loss of two yards. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage will be found. Going up top. Here we go. Here we go. And that will be incomplete. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary it really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team is playing excellent defense. Great communication. Doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. They'll try and throw for it here, and it is incomplete. Boy, a curious decision to go for it doesn't pan out, and the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position.
So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Watch the run, watch the run. Like three. 218, chop Hey, box drop, box drop. Five, seven, Looking to two. throw on first and 10. Here's McSorley. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Keep getting busy. They can't stop you. Equinemi is St. Brown. His second touchdown on the season. And the Bengals, they widen their lead. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And that makes the score 21 to zip. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not... over 100 yards yet and in today's nfl it's where it's a pass first league that is quite surprising not many teams patient enough to stick with the run everybody wants to advance the ball through the air they've got to get their timing back Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Let's go, we got this, we got this. Hey, hey, boy. Deuce, deuce. Deep breath, deep breath. To throw again, Cleveland. Open man right side is Ingram. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. 44 is the mic. 44 is the mic. I'm here all day. 44 is the mic. 46 seconds. Check, check. Bring it. Bring it. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Another drive comes and goes, still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. Well, the offense failed earlier on the previous crack at this, but they're going again on fourth down. 45 the mic. 45 the mic. They're going to try and throw. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And he's not able to get away. He is stopped well, well short of a first down. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. That's how you score. A great effort there. His second TD of the game at 16th on the season. And the Bengals, they widen their lead. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And that makes the score 28 to nothing. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. This fielded at the two. 
And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere, and so far... Just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. Second and two. This will be caught once again by Brown. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down. They're going to look to throw. Going deep for Benjamin. And this is caught inside the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Stepping up, and he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. It's their quarterback. Hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Titans are able to cut into that deficit. Elliott good on the extra point. And it's now a 28-7 ball game. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Bengals drive about to get going. All of a sudden, they have quite a bit of breathing room. This was a one-score game, but touchdowns on their last two drives, and now comfort is here, so to speak. It certainly is for them. Now, I've been in this situation before on the flip side of this, and all that's going on there is a little bit of finger pointing. Hey, what's going on? How can we stop them? Can someone make a play to try and stop this momentum? Well, they're going to be ball hawking because they need a turnover on that other side. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. This quarterback now, four of six since taking over, and he's got a first down. Now, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. I got you. I got you, son. I got you. You're up 61. Matchbox lights. Get it. Off of play action, it's McSorley. And the Titan defense steps up here, and down he goes. Sean Robinson, too much to handle that time, gets the sack. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. Uh, that no. O-line, they got to protect it. It's, it's going to be a long day. Let's go. Now a handoff looking right. And to the 49-yard line, but no further. And obviously, he is well short of the first. Nine yards on the carry there, but it'll be fourth down now. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. All day, baby, let's go! 
The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Throwing again. Cleveland. And he comes back with one complete. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he is not going to get the first down as they'll spot this at about the 28. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. On fourth down, Cleveland trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 39, and he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Now they'll run it on the toss. Pushes him over, and now running right through it. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there. And I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory. And, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't. Because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it. Because once everyone's emotions come down, hard to start them up again. So I think you may want to keep them cranking high right here. Throwing on second and three. McSorley. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Timmy Jernigan with a sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Now a handoff here to his running back. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. You got him. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. The Bengals bring out their punter now. Standing right around the midfield stripe. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. 44, 44, Mike, Mike, 44. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. 44 to Mike. Operating from the gun. Lawton. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. First down, Titans gain of 12. 
Throwing on first down. Lawton. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Second and ten. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. They'll set up to throw. Forced out to his left. And it's caught. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got it first and goal as they look to punch in. And he will take this one in for a Titans touchdown. It's their quarterback. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Titans are able to close the gap just a bit. Elliott good with a PAT. And that cuts the lead to 28-14. Two scores down, two timeouts at their disposal. This is a critical onside kick. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Now Joe Mixon. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. McSorley from the shotgun. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Despite the lead here in the fourth, they're still taking shots. Not content to sit on this lead at all. And to me, it raises the question of what's right in this game nowadays. Do you sit on the ball and run it because you have enough of a lead? Or do you try and extend it because you always feel like the other team can come back? Extend it. Have some fun. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of. But so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action. Now's the time to take a shot. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. He would have kissed it on the ground. Oh, <laughs> well, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. 23 yards, the final tally from the gun. Lawton. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. Looking to throw. Lawton. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball.
So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Keep it up. Topper, topper. Right there, right there. 56. Let's go, defenses. Get out the field, defense. To throw again, Cleveland looking in zone, but it's incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. They come up to the line now, facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Operating from the gun, Cleveland. This is caught. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Dancing, and he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. So this one in the win column now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. So for Cincinnati, they climb back to 500 now at three up and three down. And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for Tennessee, the loss here will move them back to 500 at three and three. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.